Yo, welcome back to the channel, and I really do appreciate you dropping in. And I also want to send a bunch of love for all of you that caught my long video last time. It was over an hour long, a very deep dive into one case. That was actually a script I've had well over a year. Uh, I had had a writer do that one, and the reason is, is because before that I had different writers, and I found that 911 call, and they were writing something on it. But it didn't go deep enough considering all the twists and turns of the story. So, figured I'd have it redone, and... Yeah, like I said, I've had that one over a year now, so I finally got it done. So much love for all of you that went and listened to it and enjoyed it, or didn't enjoy it. In today's video, we're going to have some really deep 911 calls. These are some of, I don't want to use the term favorite, but these are some of the crazier ones that are my most memorable that I've done that I haven't put in other compilations. So this video is going to be pretty dang deep. But before we get into it, I do want to give a shout out to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by MyHeritage. As many of you know, I took a DNA test a while ago and found a brother I did not know I had from my dad's side. Now I can't give too many details on him because he is underage. He's my little baby brother, but I guess he's pretty good at fencing. Not the stuff that goes around your yard, the actual sport fencing. But when reaching out to him, I was able to find out a lot of details about my father. And I got some pictures that you'll see on screen. Turns out my father was a chef. And here's a newspaper article featuring him as well. Sadly, it turns out he did pass away in 2016 due to cancer. But because I was able to take the MyHeritage DNA test, I was able to find pictures of him and other family I didn't know I had. There is now something called Instant Discoveries. What you'll do is when you go to your Discoveries area right at the very top of the page, you can click the Instant Discoveries. From there, it'll show you different photos or different information for your family tree that might have been found. The reason I think this is important is it helps everyone find out exactly who their family is they might not know, or even be able to print it out and share it with other family members, which my grandma loves to do very much. But she always did it manually, so something like this is a great help. And MyHeritage puts over 19 billion records at your fingertips, so it really does save you a lot of time of trying to do all the Google searches that even might be hidden. They will do that work for you. If you're like me and you've always wanted to know more about your family history, or if you just want to know your heritage, Sign up today by clicking the link in the description to get a 14-day free trial and enjoy all the amazing features MyHeritage has to offer. And if you decide to continue your subscription, you'll get a 50% discount. Kevin Allen was married at least three times. He was known to have suffered from mental and other health issues in the 90s and was prone to violence according to police reports. His latest marriage was with Katharina Kate Allen. Together they had two daughters, Carrie and Kayla. As Carrie's 10th birthday approached, Kevin and Kate's marriage began to decline due to domestic abuse. During this period, Kevin's anger was reaching extreme levels. On a few occasions, he had said that he would kill his wife and children. At work, his boss feared the worst and ordered Kevin to take anger management classes. He also considered moving Kevin to a different office location to keep him away from his family. On Easter Sunday, another altercation led to Kate leaving the house with the kids. A day before Carrie's birthday, Kevin confronted her in the mall where she worked. Later, he went online and subscribed to a service that would block Kate's phone number from receiving calls. The next day, they met again on Carrie's birthday since Carrie wanted to see her father. At the restaurant known as the Cracker Barrel, where Kevin and Kate were to have a birthday dinner, Kate told Kevin that she wanted to end their relationship. Kevin was enraged by this. He left the restaurant, got into his jeep, and began to circle the property. Kate called the police to alert them of her husband's threatening reaction. Brooklyn 911, what's your emergency? I need, uh, someone, I need a, an officer. My husband, I'm having some spouse problems, and my husband uh, <clears throat> is like circling the restaurant we're at, and he, he wants to go home, but he's circling. Where he is, like, okay, and we're circling the building. Hold on, where are you at, ma'am? Uh, oh. Hello? Uh, hello. Where are you? At Crackle Barrel, I see that there. Sorry. And he's circling the restaurant? Yeah. Did you go there together? Yeah. No, we get in separate cars. But you went to the restaurant together? Yeah. 
Okay, well, did you have an argument in the restaurant? Yeah. I, I told him that uh, I was leaving him and he, he has, uh, he went outside or whatever and then he's circling the restaurant and... What is your Kate, name? Kate Allen. Kate? Yes. And what is his name? Kevin. Does he own any weapons? I don't know. Ma'am, do you, he's your husband. Do you know if he owns any weapons? I'm not asking you. Um, I know he does, like, a pellet gun and stuff. Um, and he has, he has a pellet gun at your house? Yeah, I'm not going home. I just want to get into That's not I'm not asking you if you're going home. I'm asking you if he has any weapons so that when my officers get there and stop him, they know what they're prepared for. Okay, um... Does he have any I mean, weapons on him that you know of or own any that no, you know of? He got, okay. I know I saw some shotgun cells. He had a shotgun, but he told me he got rid of it. Okay, but he doesn't have the shotgun on him currently, I correct? I don't know. I have no idea. Did you see the shotgun, ma'am? No, I saw the shotgun cells. You, you saw the shotgun, shotgun shells on him? Yes. What kind of car is he? It's a Jeep Liberty. What color? Okay. Uh, it's a gray. Hold on a second, ma'am. 1048-5327. Cracker Barrel. As a female stating that she just informed her husband that she's leaving him, um, they got into an argument. They drove separately, but he refuses to leave the parking lot. He's just struggling, waiting for her to leave. He's in a Jeep Liberty. She says she does own a shotgun. She didn't see it on him, but she didn't see shotgun shells. What color is the Jeep? Gray. Hold on, and he's calling my daughter right now. He's calling your daughter on the phone? Hello? Ma'am? Hello? Hello? Are you talking to me or are you talking to your daughter on your daughter's phone? I'm, I'm trying to talk to him. Okay, well, try and talk to me, not to him. Okay. Can you see a license plate on his vehicle or do you know the license no. plate on his vehicle? Oh, no, I don't. I don't see him right now. Come, I don't see him right now. He's not in front of me. So I'm trying. What is his first name? Kevin. A L L E N is the last name. Yeah, he's here, and the police are here too. Hold on, him. He's right to the line now. I have to. All right, wait in the lobby for the officers. Do not go outside. Let them talk to him, okay? Ma'am. Kevin had returned to the restaurant with a gun with the intention of killing his family. A second call was made to 911. What's happening there, ma'am? Are you okay? squad. Brooklyn 911, what's your emergency? <laughs> ma'am, are you okay? <laughs> We're on our way to Cracker Barrel. Where are you? <laughs> Are you shot? No, I'm not. Is, is anybody that you know of injured? There's tons of people in here. Okay, where are you? I need you to talk quietly. Where are you? I'm like, Already advised. Where are you inside the restaurant, ma'am? I'm like behind the counter. Underneath. Okay, stay, stay underneath the counter. <laughs> I, I understand. We are right outside. We're right outside. We're going to be coming in to get you, okay? Okay. What is your name? Okay, don't stop talking. Just can you, if you can see him, say yes or no. No, I can't. Do you know if anybody's shot? I don't know. I just can't. Okay, ma'am, we are right outside. I need you to calm down for me, okay? Okay. Can you see if anybody's injured from where you're at? I don't want you to shoot his kids. See what? He's trying, trying to shoot his kid. What is your first name? My name is Rebecca. What? What is your name? He's in the girls' bathroom. Fire, I'm not going to be able to talk to you. I have a hostage on the phone and people online. He's in the restaurant. There's people still under the counter. They don't know where he's at. Okay, ma'am, I need... I'm, he's still shooting. I'm hearing shots over the phone. 
shot Kate in her head and in the torso before aiming the gun at Kayla who was in the gift shop. He then went looking for Carrie who was hiding away in the bathroom. He killed her with a shot to the abdomen. He was confronted by police outside the restaurant and refused to put down his weapon. He was shot several times and died on the spot. An investigation into the murders led to information about an affair that Kate had outside the marriage. Apparently on the night of Carrie's birthday, Kevin had seen emails from the boyfriend to Kate as well as the boyfriend's address. On top of this, it was revealed that Kevin had become addicted to pain medication that he was buying on the internet. Jason was a former Marine, a neo-Nazi and the leader of a border militia group. From a young age, he was troublesome. At 18, he was charged with aggravated assault for whacking the car of a teenager with whom he had a dispute. Later in life, he joined the armed forces, but was discharged after facing multiple court-martials, twice for theft and assault among other charges. He then moved on to vigilante activities as he patrolled the border between Arizona and Mexico for illegal immigrants. He even went so far as to detain immigrants and even was suspected to have been involved in a terrorist incident that resulted in immigrants being shot in the desert. His personal life was also filled with violence. In August 2011, his girlfriend Lisa Medoros called the police to report that she had been choked by Jason. They were together for close to two years and lived in a house owned by Lisa's ex-husband. Lisa's daughter Amber Medeiros, Amber's boyfriend Jim Hyatt, and their 15-month-old baby, as well as Brittany Medeiros, also lived in this home. On May 2, 2012, a domestic dispute with Lisa turned tragic. Brittany, who heard the tragedy ensue from her bedroom, called 911. Gilbert, Arizona, 85233. 530 West Tumbleweed and Gilbert, what's going on there? 
<laughs> there was gunshots and my mom and my niece and my sister were all on the floor and I think they're dead. My mom. Okay, tell me, what about your mom? <laughs> it was my mom's boyfriend, JT Reddy. They were fighting, they were screaming. I was in my room and now they're all dead. <laughs> okay, well, where did you hear the gunshots? I heard it coming from outside. The front door is open, they're all lying on the floor, there's blood. <laughs> okay, well, who has been shot? Do you know? My mom, Lisa Medeiros. My sister, your mom Amber Medeiros. Your mom's been shot? My mom, my sister, and my niece. <laughs> Please, your hurry. mom, your sister, and your niece have all been shot? <laughs> yes. Okay, we had, we've had officers on the way. Okay, thank you. Where is he at? I don't know. I think he's gone. The front door's open. I just heard gunshots. I was in my room. And I come out and they're all on the floor and there's blood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you know if okay, do you know where he's at or where the gun is? I don't think he has lots of guns in the garage. They were fighting, there was really lots of fighting do you think he's in the gone. garage? Do you think he's in the garage? I don't know where he is. I think he left. I don't know. Okay, do you know if he has a vehicle? Yes, he has a black car. A black car? Yeah. It's okay. Nice. What kind of car is it? I don't know what kind of car it is. Is it a two-door or a four-door? It's a four-door. It's a four-door? It's a small you know Okay, it's a passenger car. And do you know, um, um, okay, do you know um, anything else about it? Do you know a license plate or if it's registered to him? It's registered to him. That's okay, all I know. Is this, and is your boyfriend, what is his name? It's not my boyfriend. It's my mom's boyfriend. Oh, it's the mom's boyfriend? Okay, yeah. what is his name? J.T. Reddy. Jason Reddy. Reddy. Jason Reddy. Jason Reddy. And this is 530 West Tumbleweed, right? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Do you happen to know, ma'am, do you happen to know what his, um, how old he is? Um, I think he's, uh, 30-something. I don't know. 30-something. Okay. And, um, how about, um, do you know where he lives? He lives with my mom here. He's been staying here. He hasn't. Okay. Okay. Do you know, um, have you heard anything else? Where are you at in the house? I'm in my room. Okay, where is that? It's, it's, um, there's a front door. You turn right, there's a hallway, and then I'm in my room. Okay, a hallway, go right, and then you're in the room? Yeah, there's a front door, you all go right, you go straight in the room right there. Okay, okay. could I have your name? Brittany. Brittany, what's your last name? Medeiros. How do you spell that? M-E-D-E-R-O-S. B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y. Okay, are you injured at all? Well, no, I'm not injured. I was sleeping okay. in my bed. Okay. Did he know you were in the house? Yes. Okay. Okay. okay, I want you to stay, Brittany, I want you to stay where you're at, okay? We've got officers, we've got, actually we have an officer already there and, and others on the way. If, tell me if you, okay, Brittany, you're doing a really good job, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, do you have any idea if, if JT is still in the house? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> are you out of your bedroom? Are you, are you out of your bedroom? Where are you at? No, I'm still in my bedroom. You are? Okay. <laughs> And uh, the door is closed, right? Yeah, yeah, it's closed. <laughs> what are you wearing, Brittany? I'm wearing a red shirt and black shorts. Black shorts and what? And a red shirt. A red shirt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. What did, do you know what Jason was wearing? No, I don't know what he's wearing. What's that? I don't know what he's wearing. <laughs> okay.
Okay, hey, what does Jason do for a living? Um, he goes to the border with his friends. They're not what part does he of, do like, for a living, though? What is, he what doesn't work. work. He, he, he goes to the sites. He goes to the border and with their guns, and they go and try to find Mexicans with narcotics. So, okay, so does he maybe, does he have an undercover job of some sort? No, he doesn't work at all. He just sits at my house. Okay. <laughs> And he was trying to go for sheriff or something, and I don't know if that went anywhere, but. Okay. Do you know, okay, uh, let's, if you're, I, I, I'm hoping that you're going to help me a little bit, Brittany. You're doing a great job. Can we talk about Jason just a little bit more as far as, do you know if he has a stash of weapons in the house at all? Yes, in the garage. Okay. <laughs> And I think there's a gun in my mom's room. It's really small. It's <laughs> Brittany. Yes. Okay. Um, so let's talk about Jason a little bit more. I'm sorry to ask you all these questions, but you're helping us, okay? Because we okay. wanna, we're trying to help you. Help everybody as much as we can. Okay. So, can you think back about when you saw Jason today, what he may have been wearing? I didn't see him at all this morning. You yeah, haven't think. seen him at all? Okay. No, the last time I saw him was last night before I went to bed. <laughs> okay. You gotta, you know, Brittany, if you can stay with me, okay? If you can stay with me. Uh, the officers at your house, but I don't I want you to go anywhere, okay? I want you to stay right where you are until they're coming into your house. I, Brittany, are you listening to me? Yes. Brittany, okay, listen to me. Officers are coming into your house. Do not do anything unless I tell you, okay? Okay. Do not do anything, okay? No, no they're coming not, in the room. Okay. No, I'm, 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 I mean, if they, if they're, are they? I don't know if. I don't know if JC's here or not. Are you talking to the officers? Yeah. Brittany, they're out with you. Yeah. Okay. I will give you. I will go and hang up with you then, okay? If they're good with me hanging up with you. I don't. It only be JT that was on me. Okay. <laughs> arrived at the scene and found that Lisa had been shot in the face and in the back of her head. Amber and Jim were also dead. Their child, however, was still alive. A police officer at the scene said, I could see brain tissue and pooling of blood next to her head. She was later pronounced dead at the hospital. The motives behind the murders are unknown, however the police later released 911 calls that were made before the shooting one of which was made by Lisa reporting a domestic disturbance before she screams, He's gonna shoot me! Before the shooting, Lisa had even visited Gilbert Police to report the violent behavior. Lisa's ex-husband Hugo also expressed regret over leaving his children in the same home as JT Reddy. Meanwhile, Brittany moved to Florida to live with Hugo. Jose Hernandez, a 38-year-old man, was generous and loving. He was lively, energetic, and a jokester to his niece. He was hardworking and a good friend to everyone around him. His kindness extended to his ex-girlfriend, Mary Ann, who remained a part of his life. Jose met Mary Ann in 2005, and the two started dating. He was madly in love with her and was thrilled when they moved in together. 
In 2012, Jose took out a life insurance policy at the insurance company Marianne worked at. At the time, he put his niece as the beneficiary. His plan was to change it once he had a wife and kids. In 2013, Jose had a change of heart and decided to make Marianne the only beneficiary of his employee stock options, his 401k plan, and his life insurance through his company whilst leaving the other one to his niece. Jose had no idea that Marianne wanted her name to be on all the policies, and she was willing to go quite far to get what she wanted. She started scheming behind his back by meeting Anthony Del Graza, a friend of her son's and an ex-member of a Latin gang. She convinced him to blow up a car in Jose's name for an insurance payout. She then blamed her ex-husband for the car explosion. She claimed he did it out of revenge. In return, Jose received $40,000 from the insurance company. Unfortunately, Jose was blind and could not see that Marianne was manipulating and using him. She was selfish and greedy, wanting to get the most out of Jose while using their relationship as a guise. Jose later changed his beneficiary on the other life insurance policy, leaving his niece with 60% and Marianne with 40%. To make matters worse, Marianne was also living a double life. In Ottawa, she led Jose on by giving him hope that they could rekindle their love. However, in California, she had fallen in love with another man and married him, keeping it a secret from Jose. She moved back and forth, spinning her web of lies. All the while, Jose allowed Marianne to live with him when she needed a place to stay, and even paid all of her bills. He went as far as buying Marianne a Hummer, a $25,000 trailer, and financially supporting her sons. Even though Marianne was mainly financially supported by Jose, she wanted a life beyond her means. The money she was receiving was not enough, so she started to hatch a plan. She had no love for Jose and saw him as her money-making machine. She did not care what happened to him as long as she got what she wanted. Marianne plotted, and once again recruited Anthony, who was 19 years old at the time. She had a way with words and managed to convince him to help her. She wanted Anthony to kill Jose so that she could collect Jose's life insurance policy of $1.5 as well as his 401k and option funds. She promised to give Anthony $75,000 for his part in the plan. The two talked about this for months while Marianne was in California. She was desperate to get it done, and as soon as she came back to Ottawa, she was ready to carry out her plan. On a cold, snowy night on January 5th, 2014, Anthony hid behind Jose's car and waited to ambush him. Jose came down from his apartment, ready to make his way to work. He had another late shift that day. He started his car to warm it up and went to throw the trash he'd come down with in the dumpster. Anthony took his chance and jumped him. Seconds before he got close enough, Jose recognized him and called out his name. Anthony did not falter and hit Jose in the head with a heavy metal rod. Jose tried to run away, but slipped on the ice. In pursuit, Anthony slipped as well but quickly got back on his feet and kept swinging the heavy car ball joint at Jose. He landed blow after blow until Jose lay there bleeding and unconscious. Anthony ran to the car that was parked nearby with Marianne waiting for him. He tossed the ball joint on his way. In the car, Marianne grilled him on whether or not he was sure Jose was dead. She insisted that the plan would only work if he died and didn't end up as a vegetable. She even said she knew people in low places that could finish the job if Anthony hadn't been successful. The two drove off and went to make sure they had their alibis. Anthony burned his clothes as well. The next day he tried retrieving the murder weapon he'd tossed, but too much snow had fallen and he couldn't find it. It would later be found by the police. So she decided to be the one to contact Jose's family, claiming she couldn't find him at his home. She acted out her part as a worried friend, lying to everyone around her.
She was also the one to call the police and notify them Jose had gone missing. I don't want 911. Yes, ma'am. Um, I need an officer to come to the apartment of 1132 Amber Trace, apartment 3, Holland, Michigan, 49424. Okay. 1132 Amber Trace, number 3? Yes, ma'am. What's the problem there? Um, I'm, I can't find um, a friend of mine that's uh, in his apartment. He's my ex. And I came over, and I've come over two times already, and the, the bed has is made. He hasn't laid on it. And his car has been on apparently since 6 o'clock this afternoon. And I don't find him, and I don't see him anywhere. Okay. And I don't know what else to do. Okay, what is your name? My name's Marianne Inojosa. Okay, spell your last name for me, Marianne. H-I-N-O-J-O-S-A. Okay, H-I-N-O-J-O-S-A? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what is your friend's name? Um, Jose Hernandez. Is Jose Hernandez? Yes. H-E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z? Yes, yes. Does, does he live here by himself? No, my son lives here. I used to live there up until like five months ago. Um, and we just all got back, my son, myself, and my, because I got married to my husband. We, come from, we came from California. Okay, so uh, who does we, Jose live in the house with right now? Is it just him? My son, my oh. oldest son. How old is your oldest son? He's 19. Is he home? Um, no, he. I just saw him, and he was um, with his friends. But, you know, he said that he saw the car that was on at 6 o'clock. He didn't know it was on right now. I'm the one, I checked it, and it's on. Okay, and so did your son know where Jose might be? When was the last time your son saw Jose? Um, I don't know when he saw him. See, they don't, Jose works third shift, and then he gets out and he sleeps during the day, so my son is in and out. They hardly see each other. Okay. Where, where does he work? Um, he works at Royal Technologies. At Royal Technologies. And what, what is his shift time? What time is he supposed to be there? He's supposed to be there at 12. And, ma'am, he's not a person to be late. Anybody will tell you. Do you think he, he might have gotten a ride? He needs an hour. Somebody? No, no, his car is on. No, okay. his car is on. What kind of car does he have? A Honda, a Honda Civic. And it's been parked outside running since 6 p.m.? Well, I don't know if it's been on since 6 p.m., but my son saw it on at 6 p.m. And then I went over there right now and... Um, I saw the lights on, and when I got close to it, because it's a new car, you don't really hear the motor or anything. Okay. You can hear that it's on. Okay, so it's running right so now. So I don't know. What color is it? It's a white one. Okay. So then you went into the apartment inside? Yes. And he's yes. not there? No. And I went there earlier today at 4, and he was asleep. He sleeps at this time. Was he sleeping at 4 o'clock? No, he wasn't there, and the bed is exactly the way it was before. Okay, so you went at 4 o'clock and the, he was not there. You, was his car there at 4 o'clock? I don't know. I didn't see it. I tell you the truth. I didn't check it. I mean, I... Okay. Um, but okay. Did I, I don't remember. Okay, it's all right. All right, Marianne. And so now you're there. The car is there, but his, his... No, I'm not there. I'm on my way back because I went to go ask his sister if she's heard from him, and she said no. And um, they didn't know where he lived, so I gave them the address, and they're going to meet me there right now. I'm going back. Okay, what is, your, what is his date of birth? Do you know his date of birth? March 17, 75. Okay. All right, we're going to send an officer over for you, okay? Please. And you're, yes. you're, you're going to be there in how many minutes? I'm one block away right okay. now. Okay, all right. Okay, we'll send the police for you. Thank you. Bye-bye. The search for Jose continued, but it wasn't long before his body was found. Jose's sister was the one who discovered his body on January 6, 2014. It was lying next to his car at Amberwood Apartments in Park Township. He was covered in snow, frozen, and bloody. It was clear he had been attacked less than 24 hours ago. The autopsy showed he was ambushed and hit by a hard object at least five times. The final report determined he died due to blunt force trauma on his head. The police ruled it a homicide and began their investigation. 
Marianne was quickly brought in for questioning as a suspect in the case. It was during her interviews that she brought up Anthony's name, who wasn't even on the suspect list. She was ready to throw him under the bus, thinking she wouldn't have to pay him if he ended up in prison. Anthony was arrested, but unlike Marianne, he couldn't bear the guilt for the crime he committed. He pleaded guilty to second degree murder in August. He wasn't going to go down alone. He agreed to testify against Marianne as a key witness. In sometimes emotional testimonies, Anthony confessed to Marianne's involvement, naming her as the mastermind behind the whole plan. His testimony placed Marianne at the murder scene, and he confirmed that she even wrote a checklist that outlined Jose's death. She told Anthony that she would burn the note, but instead kept it, not knowing it would be a piece of evidence that would seal her fate. After a police search, the checklist was found among Marianne's belongings in her sister's basement, where she was living at the time. Despite the overwhelming evidence against her, Marianne insisted on her innocence. She claimed the checklist was part of a book or a movie script she was writing and had nothing to do with Anthony or Jose. But her lies were inconsistent. She later said Anthony forced her to write it after killing Jose by threatening her son's life. In a third claim, she told authorities an unknown man burst into her home, grabbed her by the throat and forced her to write the list. Obviously, nobody believed any of this. Marianne was found guilty of first-degree murder, solicitation of murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and providing false information to a peace officer. Marianne maintained her innocence and years later filed an appeal. However, her murder conviction was upheld due to the overwhelming proof of her motive. Evidence of a previous attempt to commit insurance fraud by burning her car was also brought up. Anthony was found guilty of second-degree murder and conspiracy to commit second-degree murder. He was sentenced to 20 to 40 years in prison. Throughout his trial and sentencing, Anthony was emotional and admitted to having made the worst decision of his life by murdering Jose. After being sent to prison, he reached out to Jose's family apologizing for what he had done. Dr. Timothy Roses and Lindsay Nichols met when she was studying radiology at Covenant Medical Center in Waterloo, Iowa, where Timothy worked as a radiologist. They had an affair together for months even though Timothy was a married man. Eventually Nichols began to have second thoughts and despite Timothy lying to her about a breakdown in his marriage, Nichols ended the relationship. Timothy didn't take the breakup well. He began to contact Lindsay's friends to ask about her whereabouts and if she was seeing someone else. On February 3rd, Lindsay posted on her Facebook that her privacy was being invaded and it needs to stop. On that very day, she added, I really don't think I should ever feel unsafe because I feel as if I'm being watched. Lindsay's friends advised her to contact the police, but she never did. On March 21st, Lindsay changed her Facebook relationship status to indicate that she was now seeing Chase Weber. This provoked Timothy further. That very next day, Timothy followed Lindsay and Chase to Chase's house approximately 15 miles away from Waterloo in a town called Jessup. He had used a truck with out-of-state license plates to do this. 911. Hi, uh, my girlfriend just pulled up and there's a guy that pulled up in truck behind her. We think he has a gun. What's the address? Uh, 914 Stephen Street, Jessup, Iowa. I mean, they're arguing by a truck. I'm, we think we've seen a gun. Okay, hold on just a second. Okay. <clears throat> okay, what's your name? Chase Weber. Trace Weber? Chase, C-H-A-S-E. And it was your girlfriend that just got home? Yes. What's Don't, I mean, she just came to come over. What's her name? Lindsay Nichols. And do you know who the person is in the truck? I'm assuming it's her ex, but I don't know his name or who he is. What kind of truck is it? 
Yeah, it looks like a Chevy, maybe Silverado. I don't, I'm not sure. Do you know what color it is? Um, silver. Hillary, please. Pardon me? Hillary, please. They're arguing very loudly. He has a gun. The police are on the way. I'm talking to you as they are en route, okay? So you don't need to be yelling at me. Just answer my I'm question. sorry. So I'm just looking out the window. What color is the truck? It's silver, gray, I believe. And if it leaves before the officer gets there, let me know. So is Lindsay still outside? Oh, I heard you shout! Oh, my God! I'm sorry. What should I do? Should I yell at him? What happened? Should I yell at him? He just shot her! He just shot her! Should I yell at the window? Oh, my God. He's down. I think he shot himself. He shot I think himself. he shot himself. I think he Did shot himself. Her also? Yes, she is on the ground. Where is he? I'm right here. Sweet Billy. Don't don't hang the phone up. I have to answer another line. Don't hang the phone up. I won't. I won't. Did you see the officer out there yet? Yes. Okay. Hold on. I can't see where she's been shot. Where is he? Where are you been hit? Yeah, the girlfriend. The shot. The bullshit. Yeah. The, I think you're right. I'm paging the, amb the ambulance right now. Just hold on. Can, can you check her? He shot himself. And he shot her and then shot himself. I, I believe he's down. She's been hit. I don't know where. I don't know. I haven't got close enough. I didn't know what you want me to do. What was your three four? Four out of ten four. Please check her. I don't is it. What? I know after the officer. Yeah. Can I talk to him for a minute? I, he's he's assessing the scene. I need him to check her. I don't, ma'am. All right, all right. The officer's there, and I have an ambulance pace. So I'm gonna let you go. Okay. Okay. Lindsay was rushed to Covenant Medical Center in Waterloo where she later died. Her passing deeply saddened the town of Evansdale. They held a candlelit vigil for her with more than 300 attendees. Following these events, Lindsay's family decided to sue Timothy's estate. The attorney said that, This lawsuit seeks to bring justice and emotional closure for Nichols' family. This cowardly and selfish killing has forever affected the lives of those who loved Lindsay. The lawsuit is seeking damages for the suffering and expenses associated with Lindsay's death, including funeral expenses and hospital treatment, as well as a claim for value of Lindsay's estate had she lived out her life. Brian White was a teenager who was addicted to a certain kind of sadness. He was dating Desiree Stepperfiend, who broke up with him for being too controlling. He did not handle the breakup well. His Facebook page was littered with quotes from crime dramas. For instance, he was also deeply obsessed with the movie American Psycho. He even changed his cover photo to that of a bloody scene by a bed in a wooden nightstand. After the breakup, he posted the following quote on his profile. I like to dissect girls. Did I mention I'm utterly insane? Meanwhile, Desiree started seeing someone else, Jacob Lee Burns. This drove Brian to the edge, and one morning as early as 7.30 a.m., Brian entered Desiree's home armed with an axe and a gun. Her mother was also inside, and Desiree was sleeping with her new boyfriend, Jacob. Brian hacked Desiree's mother to death, tied Desiree up, and made her watch him kill Jacob with an axe before turning his gun on himself and ending his life. Boy, now in one, what's the address of your emergency? There has been a murder suicide. There is no survivors. Please send Okay, help. what's going on? Who what's going on? Um my ex boyfriend broke into my house and killed my current boyfriend and then killed himself. Okay, did you just find them? Um, no, he killed my current boyfriend and then he held me hostage and he just shot himself in the head. Just now? Yeah. Okay, stay on the line with me. <laughs> and um, he kind of beat me up, so, cause, and my parents aren't home, it's just me, and I'm 17. What's his name? Brian White and Jake Burns are the victims. 
Jake Bird. B U R N S. Bird. Okay. Um, and where are the weapons at right now? What? Where are the weapons at? Where's the, the gun? gun is, the axe is in Jake's head and the gun is in Brian's hand. Where are you at inside the house? Um, I'm sitting in our breakfast nook. Uh, Brian's in the living room. There's the kitchen between us. He's, he's dead. He's gone. And so Brian killed Jake? Yeah. <laughs> Don't <laughs> touch anything, you. okay? Can you do me a favor? Can you go sit on the porch? Yeah. What's um, your name? Desiree Scaper Fenny. I can't walk, so I have to hide. You can't walk? Okay, just stay there. Are you still tied up? No. Okay, do you need an ambulance? Oh, my God. What, Desiree? Yes. Okay, what happened? Oh, I put too much pressure on my leg. Okay, how long did he hold you guys captive for? What? How long did he hold you captive for? Oh, God, since, like, 8 o'clock. Since 8 o'clock this morning? Yeah. Did he break into the house? Yeah, my mom, he watched my mom leave. He watched And I guess came in when Jake and I were sleeping. Okay, yep. Okay, are you on the are you on the porch right now? Yeah, the, it's, sorry, my leg really hurts. No, 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 that's okay. Do you need an ambulance? Um, I, yep. an ambulance, no. A medic, yes. Yeah, well, that's what, it, that's what's going to be on <laughs> like the ambulance. I don't need to go to the hospital. Okay. I, I just want to get these bodies out of my house. Okay. Yep. We're on the way. Okay. Thank you. Are you going to stay on the line? Okay. Again? Nope. Her mom left for work. And there's nobody else in there, correct? Correct. I can call my dad. He's He works at Six and Haggerty, so he can be home in about 10 minutes. Uh, my mom doesn't have a cell phone, so I don't know how to get a hold of her because she, she doesn't have a job. She got picked up by a friend this morning. Um. <laughs> okay. All right, but there is nobody, just confirming, there is nobody else in the house? No. Okay, and where does Brian live at? Where would he be registered out of? Uh, five in Newburgh. I don't know his address. You don't know his Houghton address? Street. Do you know his, he lives on Houghton? Yeah. Okay, do you know his, his car uh, is here in his mom's name. He wants me to call his mom, but. Yeah, no, don't worry about that. We'll take care of that. Yeah, my cell phone's inside. I grabbed the house phone because he yep. had my cell phone when he shot himself, and I didn't even want to look. No, nope, that's fine. Okay, do you know what his middle name and date of birth uh, the are? The cop is passing me right now. Okay, yeah, he's probably just going to park just down the street, okay? Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, no, not a problem. Just stay on the line with me until he's up there with you, okay? Okay. I, I can't walk. He beat me up. I can't walk. Do you know what Brian's middle name is? Douglas. And do you know what his date of birth is? It, tomorrow. He would be turning 20. He would be 20 tomorrow? There's no one else in the house. They're all dead. They, they can't walk. Yeah, the officer's coming up to me right now. Um, okay, go ahead and talk to the officer. Okay, okay Desiree? All yeah, right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Desiree was hospitalized and recovered from her injuries. Unfortunately, she found out that her mother had also been killed by Brian, which is something that she did not know when she called 911. Desiree's family was grateful that she was able to escape. They released a statement saying, Despite the unbelievable pain and loss of Desiree losing her mother and David Stepperfiend's loss of losing his wife of 21 years, we are grateful that Desiree was able to survive. It is the one shining miracle we all hold on to in the face of this unthinkable event. Joseph Jacobowski wrote a 161-page manifesto detailing all his grievances and mailed it to President Donald Trump on April 4, 2017. In the post office, Joseph spoke to an unknown man about the revolution and how it's time for a change. In further pursuit of his plans, on the very same day, Joseph robbed a gun store eerily known as Armageddon. He disappeared after committing the burglary. The Sheriff's Department commented that, A large number of high-end handguns and rifles were stolen and the suspect has fled the scene. After his disappearance, his sisters discovered a letter of apology from Joseph. In it, he said he needed the guns to protect himself and his family before apologizing for the theft and thanking the shop owner for respecting his Second Amendment rights. 
As the search for him grew, the FBI began to offer financial rewards for information on his whereabouts. Stories began to spring up about him. One woman claimed that Joseph used to show children how to make bombs when he was young. He would use a bottle, chemicals, and tinfoil, resulting in a pretty crazy explosion. She also stated that he was a strange kid who was always made fun of and picked on. Vernon County Sheriff's Office. Hi, Vernon County Sheriff's Office. Can I talk to you a minute? Sure. Okay. Just was up on my property. I'm off of Estes Road, and I have a man that's living in a, it looks like a blue tarp. Um, talked to him for a while. He says that he is living off the grid, but said that he had sent a letter out. And this letter, he wanted to show me a copy. I wouldn't do that. Didn't feel real comfortable doing that. But he had sent it out to um, government people and said that he can no longer go backwards now. It was kind of awkward, and I'm a therapist. That's what I was in my career. I'm retired now. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to pick up some key things of some of the stuff that he was saying. Um, don't think that there's anything more to it. Gave him until tomorrow to move out of there, um, to move along, to not be on my property anymore. I think that that's the way to do it, but I'm just calling you guys to say, is there anything or is there anybody out there that in the area that you guys are looking for? He's about 32 years old, medium build, um, pretty rough character. Could he said be he's just drug related. Though? Yeah, 32. He is, he is 32. I asked him that. He okay. Wouldn't, wouldn't really give me his name. Um, Did he? Was he bald? Did he have hair? Any any identifying features? Uh, tattoos over his hands. He was in jail for. He said he was in jail from when he was 18 to 22. He worked in a body shop for a while as a car person. Um, he worked as a roofer for a while, but he said, you know, he's done things now that he, there's no going back is what he said, and that kind of threw me for a loop. You know, I tried to say, okay, is there, and, and again, I'm a therapist, so I was always, you know, dealing with kids and, and adults and whatever, and would always say, well, it's never, you know, the thing, you can always go backwards and whatever. Mm -hmm. But he was real serious about that, that he's made some threats, that he, he said he sent out 25 letters, and it had to do with telling the government, you know, the things that they were doing wrong, and... Um, how he was going to change it all. I just, yeah, just wanted to know if you guys had anything that. Yeah, we do. Um, where are you at, sir? What's the address? Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> you go with your uh, gut. No, your gut's okay. always right. Where are you at? Um, uh, I'm off of Estes Road. What's, um, the, what's the actual address? Uh, Estes Road. How do you spell Estes? Just real quick. E S T E S. I would be right off of U and I. You're in the uh, town of Kickapoo, right? You're right. Yeah, very good. Okay. I don't mean to alarm you. We're just we are looking for somebody, so I just wanted to make sure that. Um, that what did you say your name was again, sir? My name is Jeff Gorn, G O R N. My only deal here is I don't want him to come back after this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that was yep. the reason I was giving him, but I don't also want to impede you guys in your job. So. Nope, nope. We, we appreciate everything that you've been doing so far. I just want to make sure I have everything right. So he's been living under a blue tarp, so he's living off the grid, and you're concerned you can give him until tomorrow to leave the property. He seems to be about 32, full hair, tattoos on his hands, and was in jail from 18 to 22. He's done things now that he says there's no going back to. So if you sent right. out 25 letters telling the government what they're doing wrong. Right. Um, okay. Um, I'm just trying to think if, if so. Um, any any other identifying features of this gentleman that you can think of other than like the tattoos? Does he have scars? Anything anything like that? He said he does have a full head of hair. Yeah, he has a full head of hair. He. Um no, there really isn't. Um, no other identifying. Blonde, I guess a lighter colored hair. Um, I'm colorblind, so I apologize for oh. that. He said he's been there a little bit of time. Okay. How long? How long has he said he's been living off the grid? 
since he said since August. His last job was in August of last year. Okay. Okay. So, um, we're going to have an officer come, but um, can actually I'm probably going to give you a call back. I'm going to call a couple people and make, just make sure that I have the uh, um, SOP correct on on this. On if this is the gentleman that we are um, aware of. That okay. okay, and I would yeah, I would appreciate that. Now, the thing is, is it's getting dark here pretty quick, so mm -hmm. you know, it, yep. he's up on top of the hill, and he's so he's on top of to your on, he's on top yeah, of he's your up, hill. He's, I have 150 acres here, and he actually is he borders the property between the Amish neighbor and myself, so he's right in on the property line, but that's up on top of the hill. So it's okay. not an easy access, I'll tell you that. Okay, so, but I mean, do you think if an officer were to come to your property to talk to you, and um, would he see that? Would did he, is, it, is your driver visible from where he's at? Well, I can send him to where this guy is, but I mean, but if, if you were to say see, this? If you were to it's see a cop car? 150, yeah, he's, 150 he has to go acres? up by the 150 acres, and he's probably out in the middle of it, uh, bordering another property. There is no easy, this guy's set up right, there's no easy access point. He's set up right in the middle of it? He's set up in the middle of, how can I say this? He's set up so that he can see all the way around him. And it's not an easy place to get to. I actually took a four wheeler. Did, did he? Did he happen to tell you his name? Did he say anything that would, um, like, you can call me so and so, any, anything like that? Do you? If you could give me a name, I could tell you what he said. His name was a short name. Like, it was a, like a Bob or John or Joe or something small. So if you want to check, I mean, it's not like you so know, Jacob or it would it would it, 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 it might be Joe. It Maybe. could be a tight name like that, yeah. Did he have like any facial hair? Uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit. Not like, not like. Uh, it wasn't like was a, a rough-looking character. No, but like, way. so the facial hair would it be like he has a specific type, like a mustache or or full yeah, beard? Yeah, he could have a a little bit of a mustache. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but again, some of the things he was saying didn't make sense because, of, you know, he, I asked him what he's been eating and he pointed at the grass. He's asked me to bring him up an apple. Okay. Um, you know, and I said no. I said I wouldn't get involved. I would not take the letter from him. He was irritated with that, but I wasn't comfortable walking back to his little area. No, yeah, I, I think uh, go with your gut, and if something makes you uncomfortable, yeah, you were right. Um, I am, I, I am, yeah, I think I've got enough information from you here, Jeff. I'm going to talk to my deputy here and see see what he um, has to say. Uh, we will um, possibly give you a call back. I might have an officer call you, or have an officer just come to your residence. Then, okay? Yeah. Otherwise. Um, like I said, tomorrow morning, if somebody okay. wants to do it. But if it's somebody um, that you're looking for. I'm guessing for, it'll probably be tonight. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks so much for calling, All right. Jeff. All right. Bye-bye. Vernon County Sheriff's Office. It's him. What? It is, it is the guy. Okay. Let's get a picture online. Okay. Can I put you on hold for just a second? It is. It's definitely him. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Jeff? It is him. Hey, this is Deputy Hemp Griffith, Sheriff's Office. So you're, you looked up the picture of this? Just, okay. It's not even a little bit, but okay, I just what, looked at his picture online. Okay. What, does he have the same haircut or what? Yep. Everything is the same. It's him. Okay. I can't even, that's, uh, it's him. Okay. So you're pretty much 100% positive of him then? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I am. Mm -hmm. If not, it's got to be his twin. How's that? Okay. I mean, he's a little bit more hairy because he's been out a little while the way it looks. Facial hair is a little longer, but it's him. Okay. Did he did he say anything about weapons or was there anything laying around or there was a backpack laying behind his tent, um, was on the ground, um, or behind the blue tarp that he had down. Okay. Um, it was a pretty nice looking bag. Um Is is yeah. he still there? As far as well, you know, he sure was. Yeah. And I don't think he's leaving. I told him he didn't have to leave until tomorrow, and he said, thank you, man, I appreciate it. And then I plugged the case like, 
I was a therapist for years. I pled the case like, yeah, I understand, you know, what he's going through and whatever else, but we never got into the nitty-gritty part of it. All he did was he said he sent us some letters out. And I said, hey, and I'll tell you what, in that conversation, I said, yeah, and there was something that was on the news a little while back about somebody doing something like that. But, you know, people like that need to be here, and all I, do and what, all I was doing was playing it. Okay. When did you last see him up there? Um, probably an hour ago. Okay. I know you guys probably get prank calls like this all the time. I don't make those. Okay. Okay. It was about an hour ago, and is he up on on top of the hill? He's way up top. Yeah, way okay. up on top. Yep. Okay. Are you yeah. gonna be Are you gonna be at home tonight? Yeah. You guys, okay. if you're gonna come in, come in quiet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna yep. be home. Yeah, we're he won't be able to see you guys coming in off of 131 from where he is. But if you come down you or you come down I from the opposite way off of 14 or Church Road, he's going to see you guys coming in. Okay. So you're saying take 131? Take 131 to you or I there and, and turn towards Estes. Okay. You'll come up to you for a little ways and then, or I, whatever it is there, and up to Estes. And again, I mean, this guy seems like, he seemed like he was pretty high tonight. Okay. He was beside himself. We talked about eating. He wanted me to bring him some food. Okay. Um, he told me he was eating grass to survive. Okay. So if we take 131 north and then turn down onto County U, is that okay? And then take Estes? Yes, and then okay. come up Estes Road. But and you're the again, first house on the right? Right. And okay. if you can do it incognito, if you come after dark, even if you could do it without lights, that would be great. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, we're kind of putting everything together here, but I'm sure somebody will be giving you a call back in a little bit. Um, yeah, and, once and we, I, I don't think I'm making a mistake. I just, I had that feeling when I was out yep, there. Yep, and that's totally understandable. Um, is he back, is the property where he's at back farther up Estes then? To the east no. or? It's actually, it's actually. In reference to your residence? Right, where my res residence is, there's a trail, and I don't know if you guys are looking at topos. Yeah. There's a trail that goes up to the top of the hill. Okay. Oh, okay. He crossed the first little field, he yep. crossed the second big field, and he's right there. And he's got an awesome vantage point to see everything. Okay. I asked him why he picked that spot, and he said, because I can see everything around. Okay. And he said it was with the deer stance. Okay. But I just got a bad feeling about that. Okay. All right, I'm going to put you on hold for one second here, Jeff, okay? Mm-hmm. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. Hey, we're kind of putting everything together here. I'll I'll give you a call back here in a few minutes, okay? Hey. Yeah. And if you if you I, see what's that? Uh, I, again, uh, I hope this is right. It yep. seems like it is. Yep. Okay. Well, it seems uh, like it is. Uh, if you see any vehicles going up on your property or anything like that, or you see anything else strange, give us a call back. Okay. I can tell you he has nothing as far as he doesn't have a ride. He wanted me to give him a ride okay. um, wherever I could take him. Okay. He doesn't have any way. I said, well, how did you get here? Yeah. And he didn't say that there was any vehicle or anything anywhere. Okay. So, All right. All right. So did you yeah. hitchhike? And he said, well, no, but he wouldn't say anything else. Okay. Okay. okay, yeah, if anything else, if you notice anything else out, in, out of the ordinary, give us a call back right away, okay? Mm -hmm. Right. Are you guys going to be able to look at this on a map? Yeah. And be yep. able to tell then where he is? Yep. Yep, we will. And you'll see that it it's right in that tree line between the two properties, so. Okay. All right. All right. Sounds good. Good enough. All, All right. right. Thanks, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Joseph was arrested early the very next morning. The sheriff stated that he appeared to be very disheveled and dirty and obviously had been outdoors for some time. Police also found four handguns, a long gun, ammunition, flammable liquid, a sword, a helmet, as well as a ballistic vest. But these did not account for all of the weapons that were stolen from the gun shop, which included an M16 and gun silencers.
The manhunt for Joseph had involved 18 local agencies. In the end, the matter was resolved peacefully. As David Moore, the chief of Janesville Police Department said, no one was hurt, no officers were harmed, and Mr. Jacob Bowski was taken into custody without any injuries. Maribel Rosado Morales and Donald Williams had been apart for over a year when Donald came back into her life. They had a history of domestic issues. Maribel had just been released from jail on domestic violence charges when Donald came back into her life. On August 11th, 2020, Donald confronted Maribel at her home where she had her six children, one of whom was on a Zoom call with her elementary school classmates for an online class. It was her first day of school. Maribel and Donald were arguing about a video and a conversation on Facebook. When the argument began to escalate, the teacher muted the Zoom call as she felt a domestic incident was brewing. Meanwhile, Maribel's fiancé had already dialed 911 to report the incident. 911, do you need police, fire, or medical? This is Palm Beach Beach. Hold on one second, please. This is the Palm Beach oh. County Sheriff's Office with the transfer. Uh, the caller is not there, but they're calling for 14787 Southwest 173rd Avenue in Indian Town. Okay. Hello? Hello? Yes, hello. Do you need the police or do you need an ambulance? I need the uh, police. Okay, I have the address. What's going on there? Uh, my wife had beef with her ex-boyfriend a long time ago. She just came out of jail, and he's over there at the house right now harassing her right now. I'm at work, so I can't do nothing about it, but he's got, uh, she's got a restraining over. Okay, is he outside or inside the house? I think I, he's inside. I'm about to call her right now on the other phone. She let him in the house? No, see, he goes in, not in the house, but outside, like outside in the yard. Okay, he's in the yard? Yes, he's in the yard. I'm going to call her right now. I'm a, I'm and this is your him. your wife's ex-boyfriend? Yes. They have a, they have a restraining over. And she has a restraining order? Yes, because they, she wants to call her. They put a restraining over. He was supposed to be the victim. He's not supposed to be around him. He just ought to not this morning just call this one over there. Okay. What is your what is the ex boyfriend's name? Uh, I don't know. Uh, or Donald Williams. Say again. Donald Williams. That's the boyfriend's name. Yeah. That's the ex boyfriend's name, Donald Williams. Donald Williams is he white, black, or Hispanic? Yeah. He is black. He's got dreads. And you said he just got out of jail. You know, she just got a job because of him. Oh, okay. She's not, yeah, she's on probation. She don't miss any probation. But she has a okay, is there anyone there. else in the house with your wife? Um, She's got kids there, and I'm trying to call her on another phone, but she doesn't pick it up. Okay, she so she's in the home her. with her kids. How many kids? Uh, she has six kids at home right now. Six? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what is your name? So what happened when you spoke to her? What did she say? I'm on the phone. She says, baby, please call the police. Um, his nickname is Hondo. Hondo's here, and he won't leave me alone. Please call the police right now. Hondo? So, yeah, his nickname is Hondo. Okay. I'm trying to get a hold of her on another phone, but she doesn't pick up, and I'm on the phone with you guys, so I don't know what's going on over there. Okay. Well, we have Unit 30 on the way, okay? They're going to check things out. Oh, uh, yeah, because I don't know I don't know what he's capable of doing. You know, he, right. he already had an incident, and she went to already the county jail because of him, so. Do you have any what, idea what kind of, does he have a car, or does he live in the area? Uh, he doesn't, no, he lives in the area, but he doesn't have a car. Lives in the area? Okay. Back at the house, Donald shot Maribel in front of all six of her children. On the Zoom call, the teacher first saw Maribel's daughter cover her ears at the sound of the gunshot, and then the screen went black after the laptop was struck by a bullet. Shortly after, 911 received another call from one of Maribel's children. 911, do you need police, fire, medical? What happened? Hello, 911. Um, our... Our mom was shot two times. Okay, are you on 173rd Avenue? Uh, 14787 Southwest. 
Okay. On the 73rd, yes. Okay. Um, um, Donald J. William <laughs> shot um, Maribel Morales. He had on a black jacket, um, had a black orange bike riding down the street. Hold on, looks like you said he's wearing a black jacket and he's on a bicycle? On an orange bike. He had a, a firearm and shot my mom two times on the chest. Okay. Okay, one second. I'm trying to put all this information in the calls. Okay. And he's Donald Williams. Is he white, black, or Hispanic? Donald J. William. Is he white, black, or Hispanic? Uh, 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 I really don't know. He just came up to our house saying some weird stuff and just, just shot my mom. Okay, did he have to take the gun with him? Uh, yes, he took the gun with him. Okay. Did you see what type of gun it was? Uh, there's already cops here. Okay. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So make sure you go after Donald J. Williams. We have the information. We're letting them know. We let them know. All right. All right. Thank you. As it turns out, Donald had escaped on his bicycle and boarded a Martin County public transit bus. He asked the driver to take him to Stewart. 911, do you need police, fire, or medical? City of Stewart with a transfer in reference to a Marty bus in Indian Town. Ma'am, go ahead. Hi, um, this is a Marty, uh -huh. and I have a bus that is uh, Martin Luther King and Lincoln Street, and uh, apparently something happened down there in the area. Driver got off her bus to use the ladies' room in the laundromat, and someone jumped on her bus, and they are hiding on her bus. She, I have instructed her not to get back on her bus. She's scared, and she's at the laundromat. Okay, hold on. She said there are police everywhere around her. Yes. Hold on. Can she give a description of who's on her bus or no? Hang on one second. I'll call her on the radio. Miss Bonnie. Yes. Can you give a description of the person on your bus? It's a black guy. He came running and I am telling him that I'm going to use the bathroom. shirt or pants he has on? She's very scared. I, I hear it in her voice. I'm sorry, Miss Bonnie, I didn't hear that. We got our black sweater and um, I think something like that. Okay. Okay. I heard that. About how old is he? Do you know about how old he is? Listen, I just want to go home. I, 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 tell us he's doing good work. You're doing really good, Miss Bonnie. We have the police on the phone. They're just trying to get a good description so they can get over there and get him off your bus and help you. I just got him and they got me the gun. I just want to go home. What did you say? Does he have any weapons? Does he have any weapons, or do, are they on your bus already? They got him in the floor. They got guns on him. They got guns drawn on him? Yes, they do. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, good. Down there and get her. Okay. All right, do you need anything else from me? Um, just your first name again, please. Thank I'm you. the dispatcher. Yeah. Eventually, a SWAT team responded and arrested Donald. Maribel, on the other hand, was rushed to Lawnwood Regional Medical Center where she passed away. Donald was charged with first-degree murder. Ezra McCandless was born as Monica Kay to a mother who had just turned 14 years old. After she changed her name, she dropped out of college and moved to Euclare, where she was known for her amateur art. 
She was living a carefree life with her boyfriend, Jason Mengel. They were so close that he would call her wife and she would call him husband. Not surprisingly, they had even contemplated marriage. They met Alex Woodworth, a barista and substitute teacher at Racy's Coffee Shop. Jason encouraged a friendship between Ezra and Alex because he felt they had a lot in common and would be able to talk to each other and maybe even help each other out in life. What Jason was not counting on was Ezra and Alex beginning a secret romantic relationship. Jason confronted Alex, but shortly after, Ezra ended both the relationships while also alleging one of Jason's friends sexually assaulted her. An investigation into these allegations was dropped after Alex revealed that Ezra told him that there was no assault. It was consensual and she simply regretted it. Finally, Ezra decided to move back with her family. She tried to win Jason back, but he would not budge. On March 22, 2018, Ezra surprised Jason at Racy's coffee shop. She told him she would be sharing some of her work with Alex. Jason states that after she left the coffee shop, he felt that something is wrong, and so he decided to cycle over to Alex's house. At Alex's house, he confronted Ezra and Alex and could tell something was wrong. They all went outside and came across police officers. Jason told one of the police officers, she gave me a vibe today, man. I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. Three hours later, Ezra approached the doorstep of a dairy farmer. She told the farmer that she had been assaulted and that she needed a doctor. She was bruised, bloody, and shoeless. I'm calling 911, what's the address of the emergency? This is Don Sippel calling, and I have a, a young lady that just came to my house, and somebody attacked her, and she needs a doctor. Her, her clothes are all torn, and... and what is the address you're located at? What? What is the address you are at? E7614, 430th Avenue. Okay. And is she injured? Yeah, she's injured. Her, her mouth is kind of... Uh, got some blood around it, and her clothes are all torn. Okay, and she's by herself? She's by herself. She walked to my house here just recently. Okay, and can you ask her what her name is? Just hold on a second. Okay. What's your name, ma'am? What? You don't know? in kind of bad shape. She just says she don't know. Okay, let me put you on hold. Do not hang up. I'm going to start some help, okay? Sure. Yes, I am. Okay, what is your middle initial? My middle, middle initial? Yep. A. A. And your date of birth? 11 29 Okay. But it's a young lady that's here that needs help. Yep. Be quick. Yep, I have an ambulance and some officers started that way. Did she say who did this to her? Did she what? Did she say who did this to her? No, she said she was attacked and assaulted and, and she's from Eau Claire. Okay. And uh, she said, did she tell me your name? Did she say where this happened? No, I didn't. Get, I didn't dis discuss that. Okay. Do you want to stay on the phone with me, Don? Or sure. Okay. Can, so the ambulance is on the way. Yep, ambulance and officers are on their way. I'll stay on the phone with you as long as I can. Okay, I'll I'll hang on. Okay. 16, 19, 25 seconds. Coming for help. They're coming for help. So besides her bleeding from the mouth, do we know what other injuries she has? Does she look like she's injured anywhere else? Yeah, she looks a little bit, there's some other uh, bloody marks on her, her leg a little bit. Okay. And her pants are all torn. Okay. And how old, if you had to guess, how old do you think she is? How old are you, ma'am? 19. 19. Okay. The ambulance is coming. You're going to get help. And so she came on foot, correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. She just walked to my door. Okay. Can you ask her who did this to her? Or are you not repeat, that, put, repeat that, please. Can you ask her who did this to her? Oh, just a second. Do you have any idea who did this to you? Just, just hold on. 
No, she, no, she can't. She's uh, pretty distraught. She's upset, and uh, okay. uh, I, I can see why. Okay. Don, do you have some type of blanket or something that you could get her to wrap her up? Sure, I can. Okay. Just hold on. I'll let me lay the phone down here a second. Okay. <laughs> yep. She don't have any shoes on. Okay. Pants are all muddied. Okay. I think she's probably walked quite a ways. I don't know without shoes how far she came, but. Right. Okay. And is she outside of your residence or where is she? No, she's in. I got her inside. She's inside. Okay. Yep. She's shivering, you know, she's cold, so I mean, you had a good idea that I, <laughs> I should have thought of getting a blanket around her to keep her warm, but I got her sitting on a chair. Okay, sounds good. I'll keep you on the phone here. This isn't Keith. Nope, this isn't. Where is he working there yet? Keith Sunby? Uh, he was in the jail, I know, at one point. Oh, he was at that end of it. Yep. This is a strange situation, one I've never seen, and I've been around a long time. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing you called. It's glad she made it somewhere safe anyway. Well, when, when I got, got her and brought her into the house, she wanted me to drive her to, to, to a hospital, but I didn't think I should be doing that. Yeah, no, that's perfectly fine. We'll we'll get her the help she needs. We have an ambulance there, but also. Well, that, that's just what she needs, and yep. we'll, we'll get her taken care of. Yep. The police discovered Alex's body on a dirt road near the farmhouse. The scene was horrifying as Alex had succumbed to 16 stab wounds. The district attorney for Dunn County said, I've been a prosecutor since 2001 and I've never seen anything this violent. She told investigators that Alex carved boy onto her hand with a knife, but investigators were suspicious. They did not fully believe Ezra's story. She also told them that she was in the car with Alex and he began attacking her and cutting her pants open. That's when she took the knife from him as she was afraid for her life and began to stab him. Her story did not add up, however. For example, there was not a lot of blood in the car despite Ezra saying she stabbed Alex in the car. As a result, Ezra was charged with first-degree intentional homicide. Jason was a witness during her murder trial. During the hearing day, Ezra was wearing a green sweater he had gifted her. Ezra stuck to the story of being attacked and stabbing Alex in self-defense. However, the district attorney of Dunn County believes that Ezra spent a lot of time after committing the murder staging the scene to make it look like she had been attacked and so on. The jury found Ezra guilty. Stephanie and Wesley Seagart were happily married. A mutual friend introduced them to each other. Six years later, they had eloped and later held a church wedding, too. However, things started to change after the rise of infidelity allegations. Then, Wesley, who was frequently stressed about his finances, started to drink. He became controlling. He would decide what time Stephanie should come home from work. His temper worsened, but the abuse was still not physical yet. In February of 2018, Stephanie reported an altercation with Wesley to the Sheriff's Department. Once again, they were arguing about finances and alleged infidelities. Later that very month, Stephanie called the police again. This time, Wesley had threatened to damage their home. She wanted to know what to do and how to protect herself. Stephanie told police it was not the first time Wesley had threatened to burn their house down. Wesley denied any wrongdoing despite Stephanie's account to the police. That night, police warned Wesley against burning down their home. In return, Stephanie and Wesley said they wanted a divorce. Stephanie ended up remaining with him because she wanted to make things better. Where's the knife? 
buy that now? He's dead. He's in the closet. He's dead in the closet. How did you do that? I snuck my gun from the other side of the room before he could find it. You shot him? I did. Okay. Okay, I need you. Are you there by yourself other than with him? I am, yes. What I need you to do is I need you to place the gun someplace secure outside of that okay. room. It's in, my, it's in my pocket. I brought it with me. Okay, where are you at? I'm in the living room. I'm in the living room. Okay, what I need to do is I want you to set the gun down. Okay. Okay? And I do yeah. not I do not want you to leave or move the room. Is your front door unlocked? I'm sitting in front of it. It's open. It's open? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I need you to have your hands up and just clear where the, okay. the officers can okay. see everything, okay? Okay. I need you Should to I move down. away from the gun? Yes, I need you to step I, away I from the gun. Sit. Okay. Stay I'm in that room where they can still see you, but I need you to okay. step away from that gun. Absolutely. I'll even open the blinds so they can okay. see me. What is your name? Stephanie Swagger. Stephanie Swagger. Yep. Okay. So, do you have your so? Do you know your social security number? Yeah. I just need you to calm down, and I need you to stay with me and stay where you are, okay? So that I can explain to the guys when they come over there. Okay. Okay. The gun is yeah, now. The gun is in the living room. Where's it at in the, the living gun room? Is, the gun is. I am sitting on the couch, and the gun is sitting. Like two feet away from the front door. I was okay. just sitting there because that's where I stopped because I was going to run. But I, I don't know. Okay. I'm scared. I don't know. I, I okay. just shot. I don't know. Okay. All right. We're getting home there, okay? Okay. Okay. You're sitting on the couch? I am. Okay. I'm sorry. Honey, we'll take care of things. We'll figure out what's going on when we get there, okay? I just need to say, okay. I need you to stay calm. I'm calm. Okay. I just really want to call my mom. Okay, well, we can't do any of that until I get I know. there. I know. <laughs> okay, you said he's in the bedroom? Yeah, he's in the closet in the bedroom. We had a walk-in closet. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. I have a lot of people coming. So if they, whatever they okay. advise you to do, I want you to do, but I want you to stay calm, okay? And okay, like I said, I the, the gun is not by you, right? No. It's, okay. It's by the door the on the coffee table. It's on the floor. It's by the, the floor, door. by the door. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a small Ruger, small little handgun. It's nothing crazy. Okay, I got it a as a gift. Hang on a second. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, don't be surprised if they walk in and they have their weapons drawn, okay? It's fine. The door, I'll see them because I, I have the blinds open. In the door. Mail would be there's a bedroom in the closet. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, when did all this happen? Just now I immediately called. And me, I ran because I was trying to get, a, he made me go back in the bedroom after physically assaulting me in the living room. He told me that if I didn't go to the bedroom, he was going to hurt me. He was going to stab me. He had a knife. And okay. I just, I just listened. I didn't know what else to do. So my phone was in the living room. Someone's here, I think. Okay. Or All someone right. drove by. I don't know. Yeah, there's somebody. Okay. You know the gun's right there by the door. Okay, I need you to the go. Right I need you door. to go to outside. Okay. Okay, keep your hands out of your pocket. Keep my hands out of my pocket. Up one's in the, the air. Phone, one's up. Okay, as long as you have the phone on your hand, you're good. But keep your hands up in the air and slowly walk outside. Who is this? It's going to be a police officer. What are you doing? 
Who are you talking to? Uh, a guy that is here that is a friend of his. Who is it? His name is, is Donnie Baker. No, the police officers are here as well. Okay, tell Donnie to step back for me. Okay, they're they're here. They got him. Okay, my hands are up. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. When deputies arrived, they found Wesley dead inside. They charged Stephanie with murder, but a grand jury later refused to indict Stephanie. At the time, she was already out of jail on bond. Her attorney had argued self-defense throughout the proceedings. She was slapped, punched, choked, threatened with a rather large knife. Those are all things that led to her having to do what she did. She truly feared for her life. Stephanie herself said, I loved him so much. So this is just something that is difficult to even say because I don't want people to think that I didn't care. Because I do. I always will. Once again, I really do appreciate you taking the time to check out this video. And if you're like me and trying to find out more about yourself or your heritage, don't forget to click the link in the description or the pinned comment and get yourself a two-week free trial to my heritage. I appreciate everyone's long-term support. Even if you haven't been here long, it's long term in my opinion, and much love, and I will catch you in the next video. And just remember, it's always scarier, if it's true. Bad bye.